Sup peeps, so it is Sunday and today we're going to look at the role human growth hormone and IGF-1 play in hair loss and whether or not they can be utilized in any way which benefits hair growth. So before we delve into that, let's first look at what human growth hormone is so we can better understand its purported theory as a hair loss remedy. Human growth hormone is also known as somatotropin and it is produced by the pituitary gland. Basically what it does is that it stimulates growth of every single cell in the human organism, so it's especially important during childhood and adolescence, but it is also important in adults since it helps with cellular regeneration. People who have deficiencies in growth hormone, they can have shorter stature, and they can have delayed sexual maturity. Now, this can be mitigated and treated with HGH supplementation, but it must be done during childhood because during late adolescence, the epiphyseal plates, which are the growth plates of the bone, they will fuse, which will prevent the diaphysis of the bone from growing any longer, which will prevent any further height increases, which will forever doom someone to being a manlet. On the other extreme spectrum, someone who has too much growth hormone can develop conditions like acromegaly, which is an overdevelopment of the jaw and brow bone, which could make you look like like a Neanderthal or a Kuma from Street Fighter. Uh, pituitary tumors in childhood can result in excessive production of growth hormone, which can cause gigantism, uh, and a famous example of this would be the deceased wrestler and actor known as Andre the Giant. And people with gigantism will grow extremely large, but they have a lower life expectancy, and this is likely due to cardiovascular hypertrophy, which increases the risk of death. So. What does HGH have to do with hair growth? Well, it is not directly related to hair growth, but it has more to do with the role HGH plays in the production of IGF-1. So what is IGF-1? IGF-1 is insulin-like growth factor. It is produced by the liver, but its production is stimulated by HGH. If you lack HGH, you will lack IGF-1 as well. It is a hormone that is similar in structure to insulin, and insulin is, of course, the hormone which helps glucose penetrate the cell for human energy. But in the case of IGF-1, it has a very anabolic effect and thus is sometimes used as an ergogenic aid by athletes and bodybuilders. Of course, its similarities to insulin also being mean its abuse as a performance enhancement drug can result in health problems like the development of metabolic syndrome, which is also known as type 2 diabetes. But what makes IGF-1 interesting is its role in regulating the hair growth cycle. So, IGF-1 is known to have a role in follicular pr proliferation during the hair growth cycle. Moreover, it is known that IGF-1 is regulated by androgens, most notably DHT, dehydrotestosterone. We know this because hair follicles which are under attack by DHT have lower levels of IGF-1. This makes sense because IGF-1 is what signals the hair follicles to prolong the antigen phase, which is the growth phase of the hair follicle. So in absence of IGF-1, the telogen and the catagen phase which are respectively the resting and inactive phases of the hair follicle, will be prolonged, thus resulting in increased miniaturization of the hair follicle over time. Um, to further demonstrate this link between IGF-1 and hair loss, uh, there are three case studies which were published in 2018, so this is recent data. And in the first case study, this involved a 10-year-old boy, and right off the bat, we can rule out androgenic alopecia, because even if he has the male pattern baldness gene, he is a pre-adolescent, so he won't have high enough androgen levels to express that genetic trait. And nevertheless, it was shown that he had a diffuse pattern of thinning. And at the age of four, this boy was diagnosed with a growth hormone deficiency and has been on injectable growth hormone ever since. Growth hormone can only be administered as an injection. So if you see any uh, growth hormone, oral growth hormone supplement, then you'll know that it's a scam. But anyways, despite being on growth hormone, he still had hair loss. So they checked his IGF-1 levels, which were found to be low. They increased his dose of growth hormone and noted that his height improved, but there was no effect on his hair. So in this particular case study, we're at a dead end and we can't really draw any conclusions. So let's move on. In the second case study, there was a 62-year-old woman who was felt to have androgenic alopecia, but she had also been diagnosed 22 years before with a pituitary tumor, and she had her pituitary removed, which would obviously necessitate exogenous growth hormone therapy due to the source of growth hormone in the human body, in her case, being removed. It was suspected that she had androgenic alopecia because of her family history, but despite this, she did not respond to either 2% or 5% minoxidil treatment, and this was suspected to be due to her low IGF-1 levels. Now, in the third case, we have a 26-year-old man with a typical androgenic alopecia pattern baldness. He was given one milligram of oral finasteride for five years, and there was no effect. 
Now, to find out if the drug was working, his serum DHT levels were measured, and it was found that his DHT levels were sufficiently suppressed. He was then given 10% minoxidil for two years on top of the one milligram of finasteride, and again, he had no success, even with combination therapy, which is usually very, very effective. It was found out later that he had a pituitary surgery 25 years prior when he was just a toddler. Therefore, they measured his IGF-1 levels, and they found them to be very, very low. So what do all these three cases mean? Well, first, it appears that IGF-1 is essential for hair growth. Secondly, conditions that cause low IGF-1, like having pituitary surgery, can cause people with hair loss to be resistant to conventional hair loss medications. It's striking that even very intensive treatment of clinically proven medications, like finasteride and minoxidil, had no effect on these individuals whatsoever. This suggests that IGF-1 is indeed a critical hormone for hair growth, but does that mean IGF-1 supplementation will work for everybody who has androgenic alopecia? Not so fast. In the case of Laron syndrome, which is a congenital defect where children are born with the inability to produce IGF-1, there is sparse hair growth and the hair is thin and easy to pluck, so they experience symptoms similar to androgenic alopecia, even though they're of an age where their androgens would be too low to cause it, as we see in adults who lose their hair due to androgenic alopecia. Now, people with Laron syndrome can be treated with IGF-1, and this alleviates many of the problems associated with low IGF-1 levels, not just hair loss but this also includes uh, shortened height, uh, increased adipose tissue, increased head circumference, and interest interestingly enough, it's also been shown to improve hair growth in people with Laron syndrome. In another study, which I'll link below, the hairs of 11 patients with Laron syndrome were examined by a light and electron microscope, and significant defects uh, in the hair were found in the patients with Laron syndrome who were not treated with IGF-1, but the ones who were treated with IGF-1 either had no abnormalities or very few few abnormalities, with abnormalities referring to problems with the scalp, including thin hair, patchy hair loss, and just hair loss in general. Uh, this suggests that treatment with IGF-1 reverses hair loss, specifically in these patients. But does that mean IGF-1 is a viable therapeutic option for everybody seeking to reverse androgenic alopecia? Well, People have theorized this due to the known role IGF-1 plays in regulating the growth cycle, and it has given rise to the use of research chemicals like MK677, also known as abutamorin, due to its role in allegedly raising AG. GH levels and IGF-1 levels, and thus people speculate that MK677 can also help with hair growth. Now, whether MK677 does what it claims doesn't matter in the context of stopping hair loss or promoting hair growth, because raising IGF-1 levels in healthy human beings does not do anything beneficial for the hair, and in fact, it may even be detrimental. Now, in a study from 1999, there were 51 healthy men older than 65 years of age, and they had hormone levels drawn, including testosterone and IGF-1, amongst others. Now, the men with higher levels of testosterone were more likely to have vertex baldness, but in, in addition, with increases in IGF-1, the odds of vertex baldness also increased. This implies that more is not necessarily better, and that there may be a negative interaction between testosterone and IGF-1, which actually worsens the symptoms of androgenic alopecia. So, in summary, IGF-1 is important for hair growth, but its benefits are not simply linear, in the sense that more is better. If you're born with Laron syndrome, then IGF-1 replacement may very well benefit your hair growth, and it will certainly benefit you overall, since Laron syndrome causes a whole host of physical and mental defects. Now, if you're lacking IGF-1 due to a pituitary surgery, then your androgenic alopecia may not respond well to traditional hair loss treatments like finasteride minoxidil, but we don't know whether or not IGF-1 helps in that situation. We don't know for certain. However, if you are for some reason not a responder to conventional hair loss treatments, it may be wise for you to see a doctor to see if you have an HGH or IGF-1 deficiency. I mean, don't self-diagnose though. Finally, if you have just normal IGF-1 levels and androgenic alopecia, then increasing your IGF-1 levels could actually make things worse. So please, don't try any of these research chemicals like MK677. I don't care if it's supported by bro scientists like Dave Palumbo. I mean, the guy's HGH gut is so bad. He looks like he's eight months pregnant, so why the hell would you want to take advice from a guy like that? I mean, these things absolutely will not help stop hair loss, regardless of how many anecdotes you may have heard. These people are either just scamming you or they're 
experiencing a placebo effect, so please disregard them. Of course, I should also stress that the chances you actually do have a HGH or IGF-1 deficiency are extremely low. Keep in mind, the people from these case studies were on treatment for many, many years and saw no results, so don't jump to the conclusion that these drugs are not working for you if after just one year you're not satisfied. You got to give it more time than that. It's a marathon, not a sprint, so just keep that in mind. So, all right, folks, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there. Just remember, references are in the description below, and thank you for watching.